Welcome back to another episode. Today's topic, personal finance. All right, so not sure if you caught all uh, some of the clips about the promissory note, but needed to continue along that trend and talk about personal finance. Now, a definition that I would use for it would be managing money for the present and the future. So that's looking at the money and the finances that you have and essentially having a game plan for not only today, but for tomorrow. Because the whole idea of management is that you need to make sure that you have all of your needs addressed. All right. So the, the reason for talking about personal finance and taking a little bit different slant today, I'm not going to talk about the nuts and bolts as much as I want to talk about the feelings about money. Because your feelings, your beliefs, uh, everything that you understand, uh, that's essentially what your management strategies and essentially what you actually decide to do is gonna come from. And those really need to be in line with what your goals are. So one, one, one topic, one article, actually a few articles that I read uh, just within the last day or two, talked about this, this topic of lending money to friends and family. Uh, a majority of the articles that I actually looked at out there says don't do it, don't do it. Why? Because everybody has horror stories. Everybody has that story of where you lent something out to someone and never got it back. Right, uh, I can attest for that too. Right, uh, so so why do I want to talk about that so much? Well, I wanted to talk about the specific reasons uh, that most people actually have issues in that department. And so, in looking through a few of the articles, uh, I heard reasons such as not getting paid back. Obviously, that's a big one, right? You don't want to lend something out. Uh, it doesn't make you feel comfortable to lend something out if it's not going to come back to you. And for some of the numbers that I started to see, it said an average of three out of four loans that happen with friends and family don't get paid back. So that's a pretty high number, right? Uh, so not only that, but usually if someone's coming to you for a loan, you are a last resort. They went to some bigger institutions requesting loans. Those options aren't working out. And so they're working to the bottom of the totem pole until they can actually get what they need. So again, it makes you kind of feel like, oh, you know, I'm on the back burner, but that's not a bad thing, <laughs> right? But if anything, it tells you, let's say how desperate someone may be if they are coming for you for money and they don't normally do that. Uh, third, enabling bad habits. So if someone actually comes to you asking for money, if they are not good with money, you might be inheriting their problems, <laughs> which I can totally attest to. Uh, if you decide you're gonna loan money to someone that's not good with money, uh, prepare for a world of hurt with that. Uh, and then ruins relationships. So obviously if someone's not paying you back and you had trust in them to pay you back and that doesn't happen, the relationship's gonna go south just, um, just as the, uh, the terms of the loan are being um, put in default. Uh, if you don't <coughs> actually have enough, that's the worst time to lend anything out. <coughs> Specifically, if you own an airplane, they always tell you to put your face mask on first. Uh, same thing with COVID, right? Put your face mask on first. Same thing with your finances. Make sure that you're taken care of before you actually extend anything to anyone else because you're going to be joining them with what, in whatever pit they're in if you decide not to. And then last but not least, deadlines and interest. Usually if family decides uh, or if you decide you're going to lend to friends and family, you're like, oh, don't worry, you pay me back when you can, or, or don't worry about the interest, right? Wrong, right? So all of these specific factors that I've talked about, that's not how the banking industry works. So if you're ever gonna give out a loan, uh, especially to friends and family, you need to have rules in place. Now the problem is, uh, we are predisposed to make decisions based on trust. And when it comes to decisions about personal finance, we also want to rely on trust. Oh, if I trust and know this person, that my money will be safe. Eh, wrong. Trust helps uh, to establish uh, the next step. That's the best way I can put it. Trust helps to establish the next step. Do you feel comfortable enough to work with this person? And if you do, you need to have rules. Just like a bank, you need to have rules. Now, uh, with how you feel about money, your foundation is your belief. So remember, everything kind of stems from that. So if you feel that trust is enough, uh, it, again, it, it might be kind of a dicey subject, but you need trust and you need a process. That's, that's really what I'm trying to get after. And the process, the process is what saves you. The trust allows you to kind of open that door and the process says, hey, before you come in through that door, you better wipe your feet, right? Now. If you trust someone, 
you, you still have to lay the ground rules down. That, that's the biggest error that most folks are actually making. There's lots of information out there about not mixing relationships and money, but they do go hand in hand. Uh, Anytime you end up buying something, it is because you like and understand the opportunity, whether that's the actual product or whether that's the person selling you the product. Anytime someone's trying to establish with you, that's establish that with you. That is something called building rapport, and rapport is incredibly important for sales people uh, because sales people need you to make a decision, and you're not going to do that if you don't like them, right? So that's the first thing they do. They try to. Uh, not try, but they, they execute a process in order to close the deal from their perspective. Uh, you have to know and like them and understand what the product is before you're going to sign them out of line or buy anything. So the problem, I'm going to reiterate this one more time, the problem is that too many people rely on trust alone uh, for their personal finances, and that is not enough. And just as you know, you were going to go to a car dealership and buy a car, don't get confused in thinking just because the salesperson likes you that you're going to get a great deal and everything's going to go smoothly. Because I can attest, that's not true. Uh, I've had some experiences myself and with my wife where that completely was not the case. So when you have that trust there, especially with family and friends, the same rules apply. Just because you know them, you grew up with them your entire life, you trust them, you still need process, you still need procedures, you still need to have rules in place. Uh, so remember, trust is not enough. It's just simply not enough. Uh, should you be more likely to invest someone that you know and you trust or someone you don't know at all? That's really like the, the primary question. You are going to make investments. Uh, you are going to want to see your money grow. So who do you invest it with? Do you invest it with someone that you know and trust or someone that you've never seen? Uh, I prefer someone that I know and trust, right? But again, have the ground rules in place. Uh, the trust may be uh, the trust may be there, but if the process is not. Things will fail, and that's why so many uh, defaults as far as loans happen because most people don't operate the same way banks do, right? Uh, they want to do a favor, they want to help a friend, but banks are in the business of making money because they have ground rules in place, and when you take someone and you just work with trust and you don't work on the other pieces, everything's going to collapse, and that's the.